Hi, I'm Nathan Brown with FCP Euro, and this is my Mark V Volkswagen GTI. This was originally a street car that turned into a street track car, and now is mainly a dedicated track car as, as it usually goes. Uh, still street registered. Um, I built the car originally for DE stuff. I currently run in the Grid Life series and Time Attack in their track battle format. This car actually rolled over 200,000 miles today on the way to the track. I was hoping it would happen on track, but at least I got a photo of it on the way to the track. Um, and I drove it eight hours from uh, Maryland down here and I'm gonna load all my stuff up and drive it another eight hours back. Overall, the chassis, the platform, this is what they call the PQ35 chassis. So it's the same as any Mark V, Mark VI, uh, Golf R, it's very similar to the TT. This particular engine is the what they call the FSI engine. So it's the BPY engine code. Uh, it's a timing belt motor. It is, in my opinion, a little bit better for track use than the Gen 1 TSI stuff, even though they can make a little more power because this generally, as a rule, doesn't have any oil drain back issues. It doesn't have any oil starvation issues. I do run it about a half a quart high, not quite that, on track with oil just to make sure I don't run into any issues, but it's, it's been fantastic for me. It's sort of an OEM Plus style build, so it has a lot of original you know, Volkswagen Audi components on it. Some have been upgraded, but it's really just a question of sort of like touching a lot of little things in the car versus any really big swings and modifications. So all of the suspension on the front end has been converted to 8J Audi TT parts. So it's the Mark II TT, like from 20, 2009 or so. Uh, to about 2014. So it's steering rack, spindles, uh, control arms, ball joints, et cetera, et cetera. So that's a quicker steering rack uh, and much better improved geometry, improved roll centers on the front end. That's really gripped up the front a lot and it also pushed the track out a good bit wider. Uh, I've got Fortune Auto 510 coilovers that they built just for this car. So monotube, one-way adjustable. And I currently run a 255-35 front and a 235-40 rear stagger. Um, it's you know, set up to rotate a decent amount, and that's actually one of the things I've been trying to work on this weekend, is get a little bit less, or a little bit more predictable rotation on the car, because it was pretty spicy with the extra grip up front compared to what I had in the back, uh, as it was set up pretty loose previously in terms of spring rates and everything else. Uh, specific on spring rates, I'm running a 10K front and a 12K rear, which is about a 560 pound front, about 675 pound rear. Probably gonna go down a little bit in the rear to sort of cushion that up. Um, it's got upgraded sway bars on it, all the usual stuff. Um, the brakes are from an Audi TT RS 2012, just factory Brembos. They work really well. Um, with FCP Euro, we have the lifetime replacement guarantee. So any factory part that I can use in the car is actually really advantageous. So brake pads and rotors, uh, basically you can, like, you know, I work there obviously, but I can lifetime replacement guarantee the rotor. So rather than going to something that is a tricker perhaps better braking system. This one works really well and I can essentially get the rotors for free once I need new ones. So that works out great. Um, at the rear of the car, it's all the factory control arms and everything like that, but it has been upgraded with Super Pro bushings. Uh, it has Tyrrell Sport dead set kits front and rear, which are basically collar locating or locating collars for the subframes. Um, the front subframe being a floating subframe, it doesn't lock into place. It just has the hardware that holds it in place. When you start to really add grip to these cars, there's a lot of sort of like a vagueness to it. You don't really get the input that you want. Um, and you can occasionally get a lot of noise and popping and moving as the subframe moves under load. So those keep everything locked in um, and are a really, really worthwhile upgrade. Under the hood, it has a KO4 turbo from a 2012 Golf R, along with the injectors and everything else. It should make around 300 wheel horsepower or so. I haven't had it on a dyno yet. Other than the power adders, it has the usual stuff. It has an intercooler and you know some of the different piping has been changed. Intake system, it does have an APR high pressure fuel pump for more fuel flow. Uh, one of the biggest changes that's been really advantageous for this year is adding uh, an auxiliary oil, oil cooler. So it has an adapter from a company in Germany called Bartek. And I basically built the AN lines and use a 19 row oil cooler up front. So that's helped to keep the car much cooler on track along with removing the AC condenser. In terms of the interior and safety, uh, you know, it's a little bit stripped out. I, do, I have gotten a, a, as much weight out of the car as possible. Last time I scaled it, it was 29, 24. Should be about 28, 50 now. Maybe a little less if I'm lucky, but probably not. Uh, it has Sparco, uh, Evo, has Sparco Evo 2 seats, Schroth Hans compatible harnesses, uh, has an auto, par, auto power four point bolt and roll bar. Just the basic stuff that allows me to use 
enough safety equipment for the time trial stuff that I run, uh, but it's not a fully built cage. It might get that eventually. It's obviously safer is better, but in terms of time, budget, and focus, that just hasn't quite happened yet. With all the changes that I made this year, I was trying to be more competitive in the street class. I, the really, really fast cars, the Evos and STIs, generally make a lot more power. They all run E85, so they're probably making 400 wheel horsepower, maybe a little more than that. This car, like I said, around 300. It doesn't really have anything on the straights. My main goal this weekend was to be competitive enough to get into the final top five to go for the podium sprint. I just got, I was in the top five originally and I got edged out to about P8. Uh, not too bad, I can't be too angry with myself with all the changes and first time being at this track. Uh, my main competition was uh, Patrick in his Civic Type R. He's really, really quick. Um, I had the front wheel drive record for a little while. He took it from me. This uh, last session this morning was fantastic. I improved around a 145.6, but he improved a little bit more than I did and he ran a 144.7 or so. So he took the record, that's okay. I had a lot, a lot of fun. I, I learned a lot. It's always a learning process when you're out on track and I get to drive the car home, which is always the most important thing. So I was close, didn't quite get it though. Support brands who support grassroots motorsports. Get your chemical solutions from CRC Industries. To learn more, visit crcindustries.com. Want to see more content like this? Make sure to hit that subscribe button and like this video. And for more information, visit us online at grassrootsmotorsports.com.